Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Fight Focus. And for today's video, we will be covering the top 10 worst MMA injuries of all time. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and comment what video you want to see next. Injuries happen in every sport, but injury severity is obviously different from the sports. We've all seen crazy things in sports such as soccer, basketball, and even boxing. But when it comes to a sport where there are no limits, such as MMA, the injuries can be quite insane. John Jones Toe Breaks Everyone knows of John Bones Jones, but a lot of people do not remember when he had had this horrific injury after his fight with Chael Sonnen. Chael and John had both coached their teams in Ultimate Fighter 17. After Team Sonnen had won, these two guys would end up fighting at UFC 159. Jones was successful with the takedown executed in the first 10 seconds of the fight. Chael was able to have some luck trying to get out of the clinch, but John was able to dominate most of the fight. This fight was John's fifth title defense in the light heavyweight division. Even though Chael had had some success, John was way too skilled to where Chael was able to defend all of Jones' strikes. John was able to have three successful takedowns while Chael had even put up one. This injury had happened right when John had been wailing down on Chael the last few seconds of round one. John had put Chael away by TKO with about 28 seconds left. When the ref had broken up the fight, John still had to notice how his toe had been dislocated. If stubbing your pinky toe sucks, I wonder how this would have felt without the adrenaline kicking in. Man, that looks so bad. On to the next one. Leslie Smith's ear explodes. We're all familiar with cauliflower ear. And for those who don't know what it is, it doesn't look that appealing. This was the time when Leslie Smith's ear exploded in her fight against Jessica I at UFC 180. This fight was very good to watch because both ladies were exchanging a plethora of punches. Jessica I had landed 35 strikes in the first minute of the round, while Leslie had only thrown eight. Leslie was clearly the slower fighter, but was able to take the fight to Jessica rather than trailing back. This one is too hard to watch just by the amount of blood that spurted out. Leslie's ear was already bleeding in the first round, but this didn't cause the ref to call the fight just yet. Eventually, the cut had gotten so bad when Jessica got thrown her punch, it caused the cauliflower to burst, causing the blood to come out. That does not look good at all. But hats off to Leslie for taking it like a champ and continuing the fight, not noticing her ear was literally in half. But fortunately, Herb Dean had stopped the fight for the doctor to check the ear, and later made their decision to stop the fight. Yeah, you can it. even hear the they're crowd's reaction it. that they yeah. were not really wanting she to see the injury. Leslie was not too happy when the fight got called, due to her screaming that she wanted to continue the fight. I got nothing but respect for that. Even though she was way behind on the scorecard, you can't blame her for wanting to keep going. Matt Mitrion's eye. Honestly, eye pokes are the worst. I'm pretty sure we've all had that moment with your eye being poked by a finger or something and you're cringing just thinking about it. During his fight against Travis Brown at UFC Fight Night 81, Matt had one of the more interesting injuries. During his fight against Travis Brown, Travis had poked Matt's eye twice. The first time it happened, the fight was stopped but then the second time Matt decided to keep going. This injury is one of the craziest looking ones because it looks so unbelievably fake, but isn't. The swelling was so bad that he wasn't even able to see out of his right eye. The crowd was not happy that Travis did not get any points deducted due to the cheap moves. Booze rang all over the TD Garden in Boston when Brown had his hand raised being announced the winner. Even after Travis knew that he had poked Matt's eye twice, he had still attempted to take Matt to the ground and was obviously able to do it with success. There were a lot of fingers pointing at the ref for not doing anything about it, but by then, it was already too late. Later, it was discovered in the hospital that Matt had suffered a fractured orbital bone. To show Matt some respect for still continuing the fight while his face was looking like this. Anderson Silva's leg snaps. I'm pretty sure most of y'all are familiar with the Anderson Silva injury. This is one of the more interesting ones. In a sport where leg kicks are huge, it is funny to forget that one inch off can make a huge difference in injuring your opponent or yourself. Anderson Silva had fought Chris Weidman both times and was able to lose because of his own mistakes. The first one I'm pretty sure we all remember. Chris Weidman was setting up for a punch when Anderson started faking that he had gotten wobbled, but then actually got wobbled. This caused Anderson to lose his belt to Chris. This next one is in the second fight he was going to get his rematch against Weidman. Pretty much the second fight I completely started off with just a ground game then eventually had the whole second round be a lot of punching and kicking exchanges. This one literally makes my stomach hurt. After Chris had gone for a body kick, Anderson tried to clap back with a leg kick, but ended up snapping his shin in half. Silva had broken both the tibia and the fibula. When the kick had landed, it had wrapped around Chris's leg. The part that is even harder to watch is when Anderson actually tries to step back on it, and not yet realizing that his leg is practically gone. This ended up with Anderson falling and Herb Dean getting between both fighters, causing the fight to stop. This was sad to watch because it put a big pause on the legend's career. But even on his return, he knew it was never the same. Frank Mir snaps Tim Sylvia's arm. This next injury is very intense, especially since this was one of Herb Dean's most tedious moments. This one was quite horrific to watch because it was to Tim Silva. Tim Silvio was his former two-time UFC heavyweight champion. The bout between Frank Mir and Tim Silvio was at UFC 48 back in 2004. Everyone knew how much of a beast Tim Silvio was which is why it was a really big surprise to see how the fight had turned out. 
This fight was a highly anticipated fight because of Frank Mir's size and how he was able to harness a lot of strength, especially when it came to clinching or submissions. He was able to beat big fighters such as Brock Lesnar, Antonio Silva, Todd Duffy, and even Roy Nelson. But this fight took a strange turn. When the fight had started, both fighters had some exchanges of punches and kicks, till 10 seconds later the fight had gone to the ground. Tim Silva had had his arm trapped between Frank's legs looking like he was setting up for an armbar. As Herb Dino watched closely, it had seen that Tim's arm had broken, but still continued to not tap. Herb did not want to take any chances and decided to call the fight immediately, which ended up with the crowd slightly booing while Tim confronted Herb. Joe Rogan even went back on the replay and considered it to be a broken arm. President is inside the octagon opposite oh, of our whoa, replay. I saw that. Yeah. Oh, it did look like a Herb explains a little bit more on what happened and why it seemed to have looked like it was broken. I said, man, did you know your arm was broken? And he told me, he goes, yeah, I knew. Well, then what was your plan? Why are you trying to continue? So I knew I had a minute before the pain really became Watch crippling. The weird is how his arm went back into place. Mm -hmm. How young and muscular. I talked to the doctor. They say that happens sometimes with athletes. The muscles <laughs> just put it, it, put just it right back went, in. Yeah. Yeah. This injury is from the most recent fight from the Contender Series between Joe Pfeiffer against Dustin Stolfus. Dana White had made his appearance to watch, not knowing what was about to happen. It was due to Dustin picking up Joe in order to slam him, causing Joe to stick his arm out in order to cushion the fall, thus causing his elbow to dislocate. Honestly, to watch this happen during a fight is pretty sad to see, especially since both are phenomenal athletes, and the respect Dustin shows Joe is really nice to watch. I honestly wish for a speedy recovery and hope these two will fight each other again to showcase their skills. I don't know about y'all, but what is up with Dana's reaction? He somewhat seems too happy. Shogun Hua breaking his arm. Shogun Hua was meant to fight Mark Coleman in this fight at Pride 31 in Tokyo. When the fight had started, both fighters immediately started going at it. This one was a very interesting one, due to how Shogun was able to break his own arm. Shogun tried to fight his way out of it to continue to fight stand-up. Even though Shogun was able to get up, Mark was still lashed onto his leg and would not let go. Shogun was trying to get out of it, but Mark was able to get both legs causing Shogun to immediately lose balance in a fall. When Shogun was trying to cushion his fall, he had landed on his elbows, causing his arm to contour at a weird angle. Shogun's arm snapped in half. The ref had tried to break up the fight, but Mark had gotten furious and started fighting. And after this, all chaos had ensued. All of this was happening while Shogun was still on the ground screaming while looking at his broken arm. Honestly, the replay is very painful to watch. Oh, that looks so bad. Vitor Belfort takes Marvin Eastman's eyebrow. This fight was crazy due to the gnarly eyebrow injury that Marvin had gotten from Vitor Belfort. Both of these fighters had the craziest physique. I mean, look at these guys. Anyways, back to the fight. Mark Eastman was making his debut in this fight for UFC 43 against Jiu Jitsu specialist Vitor Belfort. The fight started off with both fighters feeling each other out, till Eastman had attempted to take the Brazilian down to the ground. He had thrown numerous knees to Eastman's head till he had dropped. As soon as he fell, the Brazilian had a good 5 seconds till John McCarthy had broken up the fight. The gash on Marvin's eye is insane. I mean check that out. Vitor literally stole Marvin's eyebrow. Anyways, on to the next one. Alistair Overeem lip cut. This is one of the worst lip injuries ever seen in MMA. This fight happened in the UFC on ESPN7 when Alistair Overeem had fought Jairzinho Rosenstroke. These two fighters had showcased an excellent fight that night. When both fighters had begun fighting, Alistair was able to showcase great defense against Rosenstroke's jabs and hooks. This didn't last that long though when Rosenstroke was able to finish Overeem in the last round. There was a couple seconds left of the last round when Rosenstroke had thrown a perfect jab and then an excellent hook, which had immediately dropped Overeem. The referee had to call the fight, especially after he saw that there was an insane gash cutting through Overeem's lip all the way near his nostril. You gotta show him some respect though, he doesn't even care that his face is torn up one bit. Good lord that looks like it hurts. Corey Hill's leg snaps. A lot of people give the recognition of the leg snap to Anderson Silva, but little do they know Corey Hill had had the same injury almost 8 years before that. UFC 159 was known as one of the most gruesome UFC cards due to so many notable injuries. John Jones had broken his toe, Michael Bisping had a really bad eye poke, it was quite the night to remember. Corey Hill was set to fight Dale Hart that Saturday night. The fight had started off pretty slow until Corey had gone for a cheeky leg kick. While throwing the leg kick, Dale had brought up his leg in order to defend. Upon doing this, Corey had snapped his leg in half and didn't even notice that he started falling back after trying to use his broken leg as support. The fight was immediately stopped while Dale had tried to hop on Corey to end the fight. Alright MMA fans, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, make sure to hit that notification bell, and don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Also, comment below what video you want to see next. Which injury did you think was the worst out of all of these? Leave it in the comments below.